Hello, I'm Robin Vincent and welcome to Multimusa Technology here in the increasingly weird Toman synth reactor. Today, we're going to get into reactor uh, with Native Instruments. I am joined here with uh, Philippe and Julian from Native Instruments who are going to take me into uh, what reactor's about. Uh, mostly in a blocks kind of styling, I think, which is what I prefer most about reactor. Um, we're going to poke it about. There's some new stuff. Uh, which we're not allowed to see, which we will be looking at, which is great and very exciting. And the plan, I think, for the next half hour or so is to is to have a fiddle, is to try to draw out of it how you make it work for you. Because I've always struggled a little bit with Reactor, I confess, in that um, beyond the presets, I've not really travelled very far. Uh, with the blocks, I thought was was an awesome revolution in Reactor because it brought me back to it because I kind of... Uh, all the knobs are very small, all the controls are very small mm. in uh, in old older ensembles in Reactor, and uh, I, I never found it a particularly inspiring place, except for uh, there's this reverb that went on forever, as I used in a lot of things, and Steampipe. Oh, right. Mm. They were yeah. my top favourites. Really? <laughs> that uh, I enjoyed in there. Um, but with Reactor Blocks, it suddenly, the whole thing came alive, which was brilliant. But every time I tried to do anything, I seem to stumble and then just move on to something else and then come back to some of the presets and mess with those a little bit and enjoy that. But yeah. I wasn't able to take that any further. So hopefully, uh, with a little bit of your, your help, we could, I don't know, start with simple things and just, just build from there. Well, really. That's what we're here for. Yeah, that sounds good. So I guess first we could just tell you what's changed in this latest update. Yes. So you've used blocks before. I have. You're familiar with how it looked. If we press this button here, we're back to where we used to be in terms of blocks. So maybe I'll. It's not an impressive preset, though. I, I mean. Okay, so this I is. Would say. I would I agree, but this is um, when you load up a new rack. So this is now. This is not an ensemble. This is a new thing we call a rack. Oh, okay. When you load up a new rack, it will give you these utility modules in there by default, just right. as a time saver. Great. So there's a clock. There's a, a note in and uh, like a, a level control. So you're always going to be sure that you have, if you've got a keyboard attached, that it's going to be present. Yeah, I mean, you still have to patch it up, but yeah, yeah. The, the modules will be there straight off the bat. Now I'm just going to uh, insert a oscillator very quickly. Well, actually, no, a filter, just so that you can see. Um, so this was how blocks looked like before, right? Yes. You, you had these these devices, so they look kind of like modular modules, yeah. but then you'd have to go into a view like this to patch them. That's right. So the traditional reactor way. And that's scary. Potentially scary. It has advantages, but yeah, for some people and for some use cases, it's uh, not the best because it doesn't look like an analog modular set. Mm. It's not how we're used to it. And you need a full new layer of abstractions. So yeah. you're patching here, you're controlling here, yes. so it's it's kind of... Yeah, giving you a hard time if you're not uh, knee deep into Reactor. Exactly. <laughs> mm. So what we've added with this update is our number one requested user feature, which is front panel patching. No so way. now, if you press this button, you see all these nice little uh, ports on oh, the yeah. sides of the modules, and we can patch. Well, this doesn't make much sense, but we can patch our note in pitch to the filter here, and you get a cable. It looks like look at that. Looks like modular should look like. It right? does. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so and. Hopefully, this uh, this will mean that um, people find the barrier to entry a bit less. Like yes. They already know how to work with analog modular, and they can just drag in a bunch of blocks modules and work in exactly the same way. So what's happened in the other screen? Right, we now can that show you've you. Done that. Um, we'll bring up the, the light gray there. So basically, when you make these connections on the front panel, they're automatically uh, also made in the structure view. You can also still, if you like, make connections here and they will appear magically Great. on the top. Um, so yeah, basically you can use whichever way you feel most comfortable with. Um, I mean, a nice side effect of this as well is that uh, kind of it makes things more compact. You don't need to have the two different windows open. You don't yeah. have to have like your front panels and then your patching view because that's a lot of space here. It's all there in one place. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm not a particular fan of your browser either, to be uh, to be well, honest. Because <laughs> the, the, we the thing, for you then. yeah, yeah. I mean, I saw that a second ago. I was going to mention it, but the thing down the side. Um, I mean, it's the same. I mean, it's again. I mean, I, I mean part of the difficulty that I have because I'm looking um, at a lot of different stuff 
I don't yeah. spend a huge amount of time with one thing or repeatable time with one thing. I mean, if you're trying out different sorts of uh, things, you're trying to find things to make videos about, mm. you're throwing yourself all over the place. So um, you come back to something like React or any of the, the NKS stuff and you've got this uh, browser, it takes a while of head scratching before I tune back into it. Yeah, again. understandable. But I mean, so this was, uh, I guess, another one of our big requested user features, right? For that, so. um, let's say it was not necessarily requested, but we interviewed some users yeah. and had a look where the struggles are. And, mm. and uh, um, actually, we thought, yeah, it's cool to have some families so you can uh, visually distinguish those. And uh, now they are in families in the browser. But if you're looking for something like an oscillator, you're not looking for a specific family. Like mm. uh, yeah. the oscillator is um, potentially in XYZ and then you have to make your way through folders to find it. Mm. And so we uh, resorted it to, to a kind of um, spotlight style browsing. So you just have to hit enter. And um, yeah, basically you can now type in whatever you need. You want to have an oscillator. So you type the first three digits and here you, you uh, directly get a good choice of oscillators. Yeah. As you see. So this, so this maybe looks a little bit overwhelming, but that's because we have all the packs installed, so right. <laughs> yeah. by default. Uh, so the other great thing about this new version of Reactor is that the patching, this front panel, panel patching is now available in the free Reactor player. Oh, right. And there is a set of uh, basic blocks, all these bento box modules that are right. available for free Great. with the player. So you can, you can go in and start making great synth sounds without paying any money at all. That's, that's really good. That's really interesting. I like the idea of that. Um, so you can, you've got a, a, a synth voice worth Absolutely. Of, uh, of stuff going on? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, we have everything actually in the bento box pack that you would need to make uh, some cool synth sounds. But so along with uh, whatever you get in Reactor, you can expand on that as well? Yeah, so we're also um, selling um, a premium pack of our own blocks. Um, which I think Philip will have to say the price, I can't remember. Ooh, yeah, it's uh, 99 euros and uh, it's basically um, a selection of, of the, let's say, more uh, individual modules like uh, our take on uh, Minimoogs, so the Moog filter and the oscillator and the envelopes are in here. And from rounds, uh, a reverb, a delay, we even have the... Um, yeah, it's pretty much appreciated by the massive users, the... Um, curve sequencer, which is in Massive, is oh. also available as a block. So the people who are totally into wobbles can also make wobbles with a modular now. <laughs> and so, whoop, whoop, it's uh, definitely possible now. So are these all uh, native instrument written things, or are you partnering up with, you know, pulling a filter from this company or that company if you've got branded stuff on the way or anything um, like that? Yeah, it's uh, similar to that. So we first of all have our two products from our uh, own, the free one, which is directly shipping with the player, the premium one. And we get for launch um, already some partners signed up. And on uh, the launch, uh, we already have two partners providing six products with <clears throat> far over 200 blocks. So Crikey. And this is uh, a bit overwhelming in the mm. first second, but you can uh, buy them bit by bit, so you're not yeah. forced. So this is <laughs> why, this is why when we hit enter it. and look for an oscillator here, you have a lot. Because have a lot. we have all the stuff installed already, but yeah. uh, <laughs> I guess... No, but I mean, that's great, because I mean, I absolutely assumed, like with blocks is... <laughs> I mean, you see in a preset, you see a page of stuff. Yeah. Um, but because I haven't dug any further, I'm, I just make assumptions that that's more or less about what you get. Mm. And that's okay. And you've got a great sound going on. And you're messing around with that. And you've got a few bits and pieces and utilities to put together. Um, but you would turn to something like VCV Rack for enormity. Yeah. But that doesn't seem to be the case. You're going to give us a whole... <laughs> a whole thing. I think, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, we're, we're trying to give people, I mean, almost as much variety as VCV Rack, mm. um, but it's also a bit more of a controlled environment, I guess. Yeah. So there's some kind of like curation on our side, so. But that's no bad thing. I yeah. see that as, as helpful. You know, we all need help because I, cause I, I mean, I have played around VCV Rack a little bit. Mm. Uh, I mean, I told myself I'm gonna wait till version one comes out, but that mm. was like 18 months ago. And it's like, yeah, version one. Uh, so, but it's, again, it's one of these things which is so enormous, you don't really know where to start. Um, yeah, absolutely. So we try and make it a little bit friendlier, maybe. Yeah. So should we, like, make a patch, make it make some noise? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Let's do that. Good. So I'm going to 
this isn't patched in a sensible way right now, so I'm going to kill the filter. Um, so what it might be cool to show is a couple of the um, the blocks from our West Coast collection. I don't oh, know yeah, if you like yeah. Buchla stuff. Oh, I'm up for anything. So we have a, a complex oscillator uh, called the DWG, which we have here, you can see. Right, yeah. I'm going to drag that up there. Actually, no, let's move it. Okay. And that's a currently existing one, isn't it? That's familiar to me I think yeah actually all that so all the stuff in our two packs are things that were available before so it's it's the the same content right um, but it's a different way to access it basically okay um, yeah so here we have the DWG which you you have seen before so we can add a low pass gate as well as you do in a West Coast style voice um, we can patch the output of the oscillator here into the LPG now I should say at this point kids because i haven't built my uh, do it yourself lpg i have not looked into this at all and i don't actually know where an lpg sits in the scheme of things because i don't have one therefore i haven't okay discovered that so this is a learning opportunity where i can find out where you're supposed to put it yeah I well mean, does it work like an envelope i'm assuming that it does but... actually i mean it's more like I would say you use it in the place of a filter or a VCA. Oh, fact, so the audio both. goes through it? The audio goes through See, it. See, that's a key bit of information that I've never quite grasped. <laughs> but the wonderful thing about LPGs is because they're built using these um, a particular component called a Vactrol. Yes. And these Vactrols have uh, basically a memory. So they respond to something over time. Yeah. So this means that the way that they're used in the circuit... Uh, basically makes the LPG behave like it has a built-in envelope. So you yeah, can just... Cause, yeah, because it's the opening and closing of a switch with light, yeah? Yeah, exactly. So yeah. the light takes a, a certain amount of time to light up and to light down. And, and also the resistor, the light-dependent resistor, uh, doesn't respond instantly either. Right, so. so you get this sort of plucked sound. Exactly. I mean, actually, that's the thing. I can talk about them, I just don't actually know how to plug it in. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah, totally so fine. here we've just plugged the output of the oscillator into the LPG. Great. And that will do us for now. Um, maybe let's uh, sequence this uh, in some way. So, what's your favourite sequencer, uh, Philip? Ooh. Oh, God, he's not asking me. Ooh, I would take what's your favourite sequencer? No, no, I wouldn't know. <laughs> take the shift sequencer. That's always So, fun. the Kodiak shift sequencer. Here we go. So and I believe the, random. the reason okay. that Philip loves this one is because you can press this. <laughs> oh, that's a nice button. Yeah, and you got a random sequence, which yeah. is it's very cool. Everything should have random buttons. I think it's uh, absolutely yeah. agree. A so necessity. we're gonna uh, plug the pitch from the sequencer into the pitch control for the the carrier section of the DWG. So how do you, sorry, my glasses. How do you label things in? Do you do is it standard Eurac type labeling, labeling, or is it your own take on something like um, that? It's but it's pretty standard, and the the signal like conventions that we use are also very much similar to Eurac. Okay. So the way pitch works, the way CV works, is all very similar to to Eurac. Um, what is slightly different, and something I'll touch on a bit more in a minute, is that we have this uh, modulation bus system. So instead of having lots of CV inputs for like each thing that you might want to yeah. control. We have these A and B modulation inputs. Okay. Uh, and you can patch whatever you want into these, and then the cool thing is you can then route from this bus to whichever knobs you want to modulate. So you could route to a number of knobs. Exactly. Yeah. It's like a macro CV input. Ah. Um, and we did it this way because we thought that... Uh, it was cool. Yeah, and it gives more possibilities without having like 100 different CV inputs on yeah. every module. So yeah, that is a balance they're always trying to, trying to find. Exactly. Yeah, we also try to keep the, the interface a bit cleaner because yes. if you then have injects all over and you don't know, is it now an input, output, you have yeah. to label them and then all of a sudden it blows up to something mm. which you don't want to have. Yeah. So this is why we also uh, kind of have um, the inputs on the left side, the outputs on the right, so the people yeah. can also relate to, ah, okay, here it's the, uh, the signal is coming in, on yep. the other side it's coming out, so... <laughs> making it a bit easier, because uh, usually in, in modular equipment, uh, the ins and outs are all over. Yes. Making it uh, partly a bit difficult for beginners. Yeah, it can do. I mean, it's again, it's a school of thought. I mean, there's a lot of stuff which puts patch bays onto one side, which I find difficult. I find I like them to be yeah. stuffed by the knob. I absolutely agree, actually. Like, let's, the, let's find that helpful. I mean, we could have done that here, but um, that would have... 
in a way that would not have been allowed us to extend the modules that we already had so elegantly because yeah. we would have we they were laid out without the need for jacks on the front panel so if we wanted to now add jacks all over here we would have to redo the layout or make mm. it bigger or something so it basically made more sense to put them on the side yeah but no, i think it works i think this a and b bus system then gets a look around that problem a little bit because okay you are patching on the side but then when you actually want to assign the modulation then you do it directly on the the faceplate so it's kind of in between yes so where were we um we patched the pitch of the sequencer into the dwg um we have the built-in clock module here which can generate a clock of its own or can take MIDI sync from outside or wherever right. you want. So we'll patch the gate from that into the gate of the sequencer. Um, press play. It seems to be working. Nice. Uh, we can patch the gate from the sequencer into the pluck input of the LPG. Right. So this is... Um, you could also plug the gate into one of the modulation buses and then use it to modulate this level knob. But we also provide this pluck input which does some special processing on the signal to make it like hit the LPG in the really perfect way to get that cool kind of uh, plucky bongo sound. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So now uh, if we hook the LPG up to, well okay first off should we add anything else to the patch? Maybe a bit of reverb or or should we just go straight well, into let, the... Well let's start raw okay, and then let's pretty it up a little bit. Okay. So we're going to patch the oscillator. Because I'm enjoying the simplicity, <laughs> I have to say. Yeah. I'm, I'm still with it. I yeah. understand it. Excellent. That's I know what what's want. going on. So we've patched the LPG out into this master level control, and then we'll just patch the master level control to the physical outputs. Yeah. I and mean, I guess, uh, have you considered the idea of auto-patching? In as much as you drop something in like the output, and you know that you want to... That is an like interesting the take. The, We'd um, love to do that. Yeah, this is indeed. It's an interesting take, and uh, one of my colleagues tried it on hack days, and yeah. uh, but on on an even lower level, like having a recommendation engine by uh, just analyzing some free build synthesizers and so on. And this here belongs to this. And, yes. But yeah. it uh, did not work out in the first run, so we have to refine it. It's yeah. um, unfortunately not that straightforward as we expect. It because uh, <laughs> people use it in, in very different ways, and, yeah. and this confuses then uh, the yeah. algorithm which I learn how the people uh, uh, are patching usually. But yeah. uh, give us a bit of time, we yeah. uh, think about it. I it's, mean, this is very intentional, and that's good. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I like uh, it's just after a while, I guess you go, oh, I can't do this. I'm sure I'll plug that in, yeah, and that in, and that in. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, if, if it could learn your most common patchings and do them automatically, that would be great. Can you pull out chunks? So if you've got um, if you've got a particular patch or a part of a patch, right, can you save that as something you can then stick back in? Does that make sense? So we don't have a specific system for this yet, but that sounds like a very sensible idea. So mm. yep. who knows? <laughs> makes sense. Yeah, sub-patches. Exactly, that's the yeah. sort of thing, yeah. 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 Mm, that's Groupings. an interesting request. I mean, you, can, on our list yet, you can select multiple modules and then duplicate them. Or right. copy and paste. So there is a kind of uh, manual way to do that. But mm -hmm. actually saving the subsets at the moment, not. Should we make some sound? Yeah, go on in. The moment of truth, I'm going to press oh, oh, the play button. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? So this is the problem with patching live. So there's this button here on the uh, carrier oscillator, and you have to press it if you want it, the pitch to be controlled by the... <laughs> Modulation input. Otherwise, it's just okay. controlled by the knob. So now. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we should have. Nice. We have a nice, simple, plucked kind of boopler sound. Yeah, you do. Definitely. Come up with the timbre a bit. So there we go. Yeah. Look at that. Reasonably easy, I would say. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Uh, I mean, I don't mean to have it oversimplified, but it's just that I honestly struggle with starting anything with Reactor. You know, yeah. a, a blank page is a nightmare because you have because it's never a blank page. You've, you've already got these things in there with impossibly small writing yeah. that you don't know what to do with. <laughs> At least it's been my experience. So patching something simple, yeah, that's great. Uh, very reassuring and we haven't had to look behind the panel we can all do it on the front without having to get to the scary page exactly <laughs> yeah. yeah I mean 
I think even if you're familiar with how this stuff works, this is still much more inviting to work it with. It is, yeah. Like, I, I, I also prefer to work with the stuff this way. It's just, it's quicker and it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we even talked to, uh, we had a quick look at this yesterday and we talked about the curve of the cables and the yeah. how pleasing that exactly, is. Yeah. Just simple things yeah. Yeah. that uh, help you. Or maybe you we can also it. show, so if you want to like color code your patch a little bit, you can actually right click on a wire and you can change its color. So we can make this one green. We could make this one, oops, we can make this one yellow. So d depending on, uh, like maybe you want to color like your modulation signals a particular color, mm -hmm. and then the audio another one or something. Just you can do whatever. You can make your patch easier to read that way. Yeah, yeah definitely. Do they do the strange either gravity thing or uh, hair dryer thing where they move out of the way of your mouse as you're trying to find things? Do you know what I mean? To I've to seen that before. Or, uh, what's the one that it does it really weirdly on the Arturia? Um, yeah. Modular, the big uh, <laughs> mode modular, where you move about and the cables go, whoa! Back away. Not at the moment. I wasn't saying it's a feature request, I was just wondering whether you had a system by which you could <laughs> see through the cables, um, Oh, yeah, well, it's, yes. Oh, it's wow. an interesting button which we implemented, because uh, this is something I guess a lot of people can relate to. Maybe I just stop the sequence for a second. <laughs> and uh, it's uh, this magic button. And boom, oh, the right. cables are gone. It's but maybe... you still see uh, somehow an indicator oh, yeah, around exactly. the jack hats. Yeah. And, uh, so, and uh, what's also fun, uh, this makes now not too much sense, but you can even uh, wire something up in this mode, so invisibly. So if you're in a super busy patch uh, yeah. from time to time, it's really good to not see all cables, yeah. but yeah. just the ones you want to see. But uh, it's it's not a real fade out. It's really like, okay, we can turn them on and off, basically. Maybe we'll add some fancy animation in the future, but yeah, uh, I think this nice. brings the... Uh, the important element in terms of usability. <laughs> yeah, the, the first uh, request I usually get is do the cable wiggle? And uh, yeah. no, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a reason thing again, I think, as well, every time you plug something in the back. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's time for them to turn that around as well. I've, uh, you know, when we talk about reason, they need to put the patching on the front, I think, because otherwise you forget about it. Yeah. But by the by, that's something else. Uh, can you patch it badly? Can you do it? wrong does it prevent you from patching wrongly because i know some bits of software like this no. don't let you plug into bad things no uh, basically the only thing which is not possible is uh, patching an input to an input or right. uh, uh, an output to an output this is prevented but uh, um, else you can patch up everything because yeah i think for more or less each and every connection is eventually a reasoning <laughs> yeah so the people mm. can really go crazy and uh, but you can't destroy it as uh, possibly with an analog modular if you're really hitting the although it's difficult wrong. it's very it's, it's really difficult but it's theoretically possible so but, i've just uh, patched yeah. something wrongly right well i don't know actually in yeah. a modular context it's not wrongly but uh i've fed the output of the lpg back into the FM input for the uh, oscillator. So, a little bit wrong, maybe. Yeah, a little bit <laughs> wrong. Is each uh, socket a, a multiple, essentially? Yep. Yeah, absolutely. In both directions. Uh, it doesn't mix. Uh, only one. So the outputs, you can um, get as many wires out of an output, but uh -huh. uh, um, stacking more on one input is uh, not possible in this case. Do you and have like uh, a, a, a mixer yeah, of module course. that we you have to do that with? Well, we can hit enter. Is... Maybe let's do this over here. Um, we can hit enter, type mix. We have, we have many mixes oh, yeah, for all your possible mixing needs. Um, yeah. yeah. We can just pick one just to have a look at it quickly. Uh, this one from the toy box pack. There we go, simple four input mixer. Right, yeah. and then CV and or audio. Yeah, of course, make. there's no difference in this case. Yeah. So what do we want to add to our patch next? What do you reckon? Uh, we want, I would say, you want um, another oscillator to detune alongside it. Okay. Okay, actually, we can kind of do that with. Uh, so, this is a dual oscillator already. Oh, okay. But we're not using uh, not one using of half of it. Yeah, so in fact, we don't even need to add anything extra there. So, we can patch the uh, pitch from the, uh, from the sequencer again into the pitch modulation input for the, for the other oscillator. Um, 
Shall we have another LPG or should we mix it first? Let's, let's mix it first. So I can bring up the mixing list again. Let's take this uh, four channel mixer. Uh, let's put it up here just for visibility. So at the moment we're taking the... Everything readjusts and keeps hold of its cables, presumably, yeah, when you course, do that? of course, yeah. So at the moment we were taking the Tombra out, which is basically the carrier oscillator going through a wave folder. Um, so we're going to keep that, but I'll unpatch it from the LPG, so that can go to channel 1 on the mixer. Uh, and then I'm also going to take the, the modulator out, which is the other oscillator. Uh, maybe I'll also turn it to a different waveform. And I'm going to patch it into input two of the mixer. And then we're going to patch from the mixer into the LPG. So hopefully this now produces a sound. Yeah, there we go. So we now have two signals mixed. Uh, we've got, well, OK, now you see why you might want to hide the cables, because mm -hmm. our fine knob was hidden underneath. Yeah. It? So. Second oscillator. So now we're going to want to modulate that level knob, I imagine, in the LPG. Can, yeah. Do you have an LFO? Could we do have an, an LFO, LFO. Or we could use, we also have this velocity lane on the sequencer as well. Oh, well, no, let's add another module. Okay, let's add another module. Does it uh, word wrap itself or does it continue off the page? When you add modules, um, you can um, infinitely okay. <laughs> stretch it in, into the vertical dimension. Yeah. So if you were like scaling it on your screen, horizontal. would it reassert? Would it reset itself or remap mm. it? No, basically transfer? you can you get a scroll bar as soon as you're right. you're hitting the, the the border here or in the uh, vertical direction. Then you get a scroll bar and you can make basically just uh, limited by your CPU <laughs> big patches. Yeah. Okay. After a while, um, you will hit the limit of the CPU, I guess. Mm -hmm. So, you wanted to use the LFO to modulate the level? Was that yeah, the intention? Yeah. Okay, so, so yeah. we're going to take the output of the LFO, we're going to go into the A input, so one of the modulation buses. Oh, right, yeah. Because gotcha. that's the same yeah. for every module. Right, like, yeah. That's like a standard. Then we just click on the A, and then we assign a bit of the signal to the level there. And then it shows it. Yeah. I'm going to turn off the cables again. You can see, yeah. just like in... The existing blocks, uh, you can see what the modulation is doing. Because uh, I like that. I mean, this is where I uh, where my um, interest in hardware falls down. Yeah. Because no one's doing um, motorized knobs. No one. No one cares. Apparently. Very I expensive, figured, I guess. I imagine <laughs> very expensive. Uh, whereas, you know, coming from software, um, anyone anyone who's running a piece of software who doesn't animate the knobs in that way is is nuts because yeah. you have the ability to do it and it's so enormously helpful absolutely you can see that something's actually being modulated yeah which is why i can't see on my euro rack but i can work it out because i can hold the cable and i can follow okay. that to where it's going so you can find it out in yeah. software you can't you can never work it out no, so I, that's I, something like that i think 100 agree like, is uh, very vital visual feedback makes yes. everything much more intuitive yes and that, yeah, I personally find the uh, hardware jacks with LEDs inside uh, pretty charming. Some, yeah. some manufacturers uh, uh, have implemented it, and that's really fun. So you see, really, yeah. that the jack head somehow if it's yeah. lighting up, and uh, that's really although I was idea. talking to uh, to Divkid about that yesterday, and he was saying that it has an effect on the voltage that's going through, or it can oh. do. Oh, really? Ooh. So you find yeah. that uh, you're getting volts are being lost because uh -huh. it's needed to, uh, to yeah. power the cables. Uh -huh. okay. So there are, there are caveats, yeah. I suppose, yeah. depending on what you're doing. It's always a price to pay somewhere. There is. Should we hear what our modulation has done? Oh, yeah. Um, Yes. So I would say maybe next we add a reverb. Yeah. What do you think? Go for it. So we can use the reverb. Uh, so we have a really nice reverb taken from another reactor synth of ours called Rounds. That's incomplete. Oh yeah. Yeah. You might know it. Uh huh. 
I think it's a great reverb. It's kind of got a very kind of synthy artificial quality, which I really like personally. Um, so we can patch. So let's bring the cables back so we can see what we're doing. So instead of going out from the LPG into this uh, master volume, we're going to go out to the left and right inputs of the reverb. Actually, maybe let's move the reverb up top so that it's sitting where it's being used. Yeah. It's a bit more intuitive, so patching the right channel as well. Could you create a, a send system, a bus system for effects if you so desired? Sure. Um, absolutely. Um, it will need a little bit of patching. Yeah. Um, I don't, I don't mean if... to do it now, I just mean as a, as a theory. Of course, going yeah. I don't know if we something. have... Do we have a module, a mixer module that has a send at the moment? Um, not yet, but you, you would have to construct one from uh, a mixer, which is all crossfader, and then sending yeah. it to the reverb, and uh, we have a more channel mixer, so there's also a four channel stereo mixer, and then you can create... Yeah, basically you have to construct one via... Uh, one mixer which is sending and the other one then uh, taking the return. So I've patched a reverb into the output of the LPG and then I've we have a velocity channel coming from the mm, sequencer yeah. and I'm going to patch that in to control the dry wet mix so that we can just apply the reverb on some steps. Nice. So let's turn this down to minimum and then add the modulation maximum and then so we can put say we want reverb on just this hit. Let's see what that sounds like. So you can see we can add mm -hmm. just reverb where we want it. So for this example. is like track zero one now. This is where a little bit, yeah. Yeah, that's where that sequencer is now. Reminding me of. Yep, yep, yep. So final thing. Final thing, yeah. Let's tap a, a filter in. What kind of filter would you like? Uh, do you have one that looks pretty? Well, Ooh, I think that's subjective. But <laughs> um, let's try the Monarch filter. So yeah. this is a well-known one. It's from Monarch, our yeah. Minimoog emulation. Um, I think it looks nice in a vintage Moog way. It does, yeah. Yeah, I can yeah. see that. Um, so the, the lovely load button exactly. can, can make this really fat. Where do we want to patch it in the signal structure, though? It needs to go before the reverb, yeah. I would say. But after the LPG? Yeah. Okay, let's do that. So I'm going to patch the LPG into the Monarch filter, then I'm going to pop patch the output into the reverb. Um, that, did that automatically unpatch itself? It did. Okay. Which is helpful. Yes. Um, and let's just see what that sounds like. So let's bring the cutoff down, turn the resonance Ooh, up a bit. Shall we add an envelope to the filter? Oh, we can do it this way. Let's... Oops. <laughs> So yeah, there we go. That's brilliant. That's been so helpful because um, we've yeah we like built like a little synth within Reactor, which is great. It feels to me like a triumph because uh, it's something which seems to be so un unobtainable uh, when faced with a page of either blocks or the stuff behind. You know, so it's great. That's been so enormously helpful. So I mean, I don't I have no idea what's happened out there, but as far as I'm concerned, this has been very useful to me. So I might do more on this uh, once uh, this version of Reactor comes on. It's not Reactor 7, it's 6 point something or other, 6.3? Yeah, okay. and it's free for everybody. Basically. Excellent. So, yeah. And when would we be seeing it? Um, this is April 8. April. Okay. And uh, I guess your video is coming out this same day. I imagine it would. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine it would, yes. So, yeah. thank you, uh, Philip and Julian. That's been fantastic. Um, I'll hopefully do a lot more on this now that I understand it a little bit more. And I hope that's been useful to you. And in the meantime, go make some tunes. Thanks for thank having us. Thank much. you. Bye.